Welcome, everybody. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Every week, we bring you the stories of people who are making the world a little bit better locally, globally, and digitally. It's exciting for us to find people who, who believe in what Rotary believes in, which is service above self, and that they are finding innovative ways to, to make something happen that perhaps is even beyond the radar a little bit of the, uh, of the folks that they're around. And in regard to that, we have a speaker today who's going to talk to us about textiles, which I think is exciting. We, we have this, this kind of interesting problem that is not on the radar of a lot of people, but should be. And, uh, and so we have Aaron Weens with us today, who works as, uh, as a person focused on ethical textile waste management. And what we're going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know, you can always pause the video and scroll down if you are on the, uh, on the YouTube page or if you are on our SiliconValleyRotary.com page, pause and scroll up and get the full bio. But I'll hand it over right away to Aaron. Aaron, we are so glad to have you. Welcome to the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Hi, thank you for having me. It's really great to be here. I am super excited to talk to you all about textile waste and the nonprofit that I work for called Fab Scrap. Um, just to recap, my name is Erin Weens and I'm the community lead. And today what we're gonna be talking about is how Fab Scrap's mission is to end commercial textile waste. So the way we do that is really maximizing the value of unused fabric through being a convenient and transparent service to our clients, an affordable and accessible material resource to our community, but also providing um, information education to a community of change makers who are passionate about this issue. So what we're gonna do is cover what is textile waste, the fashion's linear design process and how that contributes to textile waste and Fab Scrap's role in diverting textiles from landfill. So the first question is, what is textile waste? So with textile waste, there's two different types. There's residential, which is what we call post-consumer, and that is waste generated by the public. So you and I, what are we doing with our clothes, our bedding, our curtains and pillowcases, et cetera, whether we're donating these or if we're throwing them into the trash. On the flip side, we have commercial. So that's gonna be pre-consumer, and that's waste that's generated by businesses. So specifically with textiles, it is going to be the fabric that is unused or left over in the design and production process. And when it's good, it's donated or reused. But when it's bad, this is where it ends up in landfill. So if we're going to talk about the problem of textile waste, let's talk about volume. In New York City specifically, residents throw out around 200,000 tons of clothing and textiles. That is 52 pounds per New York resident. And if we're going to zoom out even more to understand the impact of this, 200,000 tons of clothing and textiles annually, that is 14 times the weight of the Brooklyn Bridge. So if you imagine 14 Brooklyn Bridges spanning across the river in New York City, that's how much textile waste comes from just our residents in one year. So if we're going to flip on over to from residential textile waste to commercial waste, Commercial textile waste is estimated to be about 40 times greater than residential, but there's a caveat. Commercial textile waste is not nearly as tracked or regulated when it comes as residential. Residential is regulated and tracked through the Department of Sanitation. However, commercial businesses are solely responsible for disposing of their waste through private haulers. This means that there's nowhere really that where businesses are required to report their waste, and there's no studies or regulations on what they're throwing out and how they're doing it. There is a textile waste law that exists in New York City. However, it goes unenforced and unregulated. So there's not a lot of information about what's coming out from these brands and these design offices that exist in New York. So one for every one pound of residential waste, it's estimated that there's 40 pounds of commercial waste that already happened upstream. And like I said, the numbers are really hard to calculate. So what we can really go based off of is what we're doing at Fab Scrap. But overall, it's a problem. 40 times more than one pound of residential, that's a lot. So I really wanna focus on these key definitions because this is what's gonna guide us through these ideas. The linear design process is what the fashion industry really 
is uh, built upon. It is designing, producing, and then retail. So people are buying the products and there's not really a process for them to recycle or reuse them inherently. There are recycling programs that exist, such as what we see in this graphic here. And that's essentially the extension of, you know, the extension of the life of this textile waste, such as garments and uh, fabrics. So this is where we're kind of existing right now when we're seeing thrift stores and textile recycling. However, what we're aiming to do at Fab Scrap and what the goal is, is circularity. So circularity is when the end of use, the end of life of a garment or a textile or a product is considered at the very beginning. And the idea of this is rather than waste being an inevitable outcome, it's actually a resource and something that's prevented from the very start. So with that in mind, let's talk about linear design. So globally, there's about there's over a million tons of textile waste coming from the design process alone. Specifically, that's about 2.2 billion pounds just from design offices conceptualizing a garment. This is before it's even produced. What you can see in this graphic here is the design process is really sample making. So we're gonna go through what the materials are in this process, but what's important to understand is that FabScrap intervenes at this point, but we're not tackling production. This is just design waste and this is just in New York City. But when we're talking about volume and impact, again, 2.12 billion pounds per year is a lot of textile waste. So what we're hoping to do is minimize that impact and go to the root of it, which is the design sample making process alone. Okay, so like I said, let's talk about what the textile waste is that comes from the design process. So first we start with headers. Headers are essentially a sales tool used by fabric mills that have all the information they could possibly need about the fabric that they could have. Important thing about headers is that they are a sales tool. They're often sent to design offices unsolicited. They don't really need them. They're really small swatches of fabric that in the overall design process is just a decision tool. They're not using this to make the samples. They're not using this once the samples are created and official. They just use this to build a mood board or to decide if maybe they want a fabric. However, offices are receiving upwards of 50 to 100 of these and they go unused. So this is the first piece of textile waste that comes from the design process and about 75% of what Fat Scrap receives. Okay, so cuttings are what happens when a designer wants to test out a fabric. If they decide that they want it, they will then move on to sample yardage. These are full rolls of material that they will get sent from fabric mills. Both of these materials will end up getting tossed into the landfill because once they're done using them, they don't actually wanna use them anymore. Then we have the sample garments themselves, which end up being mutilated or unfinished because this is what's being used as a tool to decide whether or not they wanna move on with the overall sample. Lastly, we have the sewing and cutting waste. These are the little bits and pieces of uh, fabric and threads that come from this process that also get tossed into landfill. So overall, you can tell that there's a lot of textile waste just from this one piece of design process. But now we're gonna talk about how FabScrap is addressing this and who we are. So essentially, FabScrap started with our founders, Jessica and Camille. And they came together with their backgrounds in sanitation and in design to solve this problem of materials going unused during, during the design process. They both, side this, they both saw the sides of waste and the amount of waste that were coming from this and decided to combine their skills together and create Fab Scrap. So we have a full team. We're a full team of artists, designers, and people who care about sustainability all working to minimize the impact. So the way Fab Scrap works is first we go through recycling, which is the pickup service, then the sorting of materials and the reuse of materials. So the first process really is brands are filling up these bags with textile waste, Fab Scrap picks it up, and then we bring it back to our office. Overall, we're receiving over 7,000 pounds of materials every single week. So there's a lot of textiles, as we talked about, alone coming from New York City. 
A big detail that we can probably address in Q&A is the overall impact that this data collection has with our brands. So we're reporting back to them exactly their impact when they recycle with FabScrap, which is a huge part of tracking textile waste on the commercial level. Overall, a huge takeaway from this is that FabScrap is charging these brands for recycling. We're not a donation center. We believe that the fashion industry needs to be held accountable and funding their own uh, waste management. So once we've collected these materials from these brands, we then move into the sorting process. The sorting process is essentially a group of volunteers who work with us every day. And it's really working to separate what can be downcycled, reused, or recycled. The process is really straightforward. We're essentially removing anything that isn't fabric from these swatches, these cuttings, um, the sample garments, for example. And we're putting those into landfill. But anything that is fabric, we're either downcycling or reusing. So when I say downcycling, this is essentially the process of shredding fabrics apart to create insulation. We call it shoddy. So shoddy is a fluffy mass of shredded textiles that can then get turned into moving blankets or insulation soundproofing material. Most of it industrially ends up in the automotive inter industry. But this is what happens to the textiles that we can't use, which are essentially smaller than a yard, those swatches that we talked about. Um, but when it's larger than a yard or materials that we can actually reuse, those are the materials that end up in our reuse thrift store, which is essentially the shopping model that we've adopted of materials that can be reused. So about 40% of the materials that we receive are totally reusable. This is the cuttings, the fabric rolls, leather hides, yarn cones, hardware, zippers, everything that you can imagine that goes into designing a garment we can actually resell. So instead of these materials ending up in landfill, we can actually make them available for our community. So one of our goals is to be 50-50, which means we want to give away as much as we receive. And maybe this is something we can talk a little bit more in Q&A, but we really aim to make these materials as accessible as possible to our immediate community of sewers, students, small brands, and anyone else who's eager to be more ethical in their fabric choice. Our impact over the last six years is we work over with over 700 brands. We've had over 16,000 volunteers come and help us sort through textile waste. And we've been able to save over 1.3 million pounds of textiles from landfill. And we're only gonna keep going in our seventh year. Oops, my bad. So as we wrap up, I just wanna return back to the slide and really emphasize that the linear design process really is a core issue of how the fat fashion industry is contributing to textile waste. Fab scrap is an intervention point in these recycling programs and we are preventing these materials from going to landfill for as long as possible. But really our goal is to educate brands, designers, students, lawmakers, and how circularity really is the key to reducing textile waste and reframing that waste as a resource rather than the inevitable outcome. So with that, that's my little spiel about Fab Scrap. So I would love to answer any questions and even go back and, you know, clarify anything if necessary. But yeah, well, thanks. Wonderful presentation, Aaron. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I have several questions that I want to dive into. Uh, just as a reminder, everyone, this is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. My name is Rushton Hurley. I am the programs chair. And if you have any questions about the work we do, write us at programs at siliconvalleyrotary.com. All right. So you're in Brooklyn, uh, you know, so you have all of these stories about greater New York. And, I, and I'm curious about several, several elements of that, uh, pieces that you brought up over the course of the presentation. One is, are, are you working with partners outside of New York City in some fashion? Do you do programs to try to help other communities start something similar? How does that work? Yes, so there's a few levels in that. So on our service side, we when we're working with brands to recycle their textiles, we really try to stay in our local communities. So for our Brooklyn office, we really only work with New York and a little bit of New Jersey to take in that textile waste. Um, but we do have a second location in Philadelphia. So Philadelphia serves the Pennsylvania and even some regions around that. So DC, Baltimore, um, a few other regions. So 
with our service, we're able to at least travel a little bit outside of these regions to pick up the textile waste. But because there's so much, not only in this area, but nationally and globally, if we opened it up for anyone to send their textiles to us, we would be getting way more than 7,000 pounds a week. So we really try to keep it as controlled as possible. And also if we stick to our immediate communities, we're able to provide a really convenient and transparent service that is top notch. So we really pride ourselves on being able to get a request for a pickup and be able to go and pick it up within that next week. So we wanna make sure that businesses are able to access us and recycle with us in a convenient way. Um, for shopping and for um, accessing the fabric materials, we do ship nationally from our online store. So folks can shop the reusable materials through our online store and get it shipped from New York to California. Um, and with our free fabric program, we're able to ship out fabric to nonprofits or K through 12 educational programs in a different state that might need these materials as well. And is that a, a process that is designed to help you raise funds for the larger effort? Uh, is it is it part of your mission? Uh, both? How does that work? I would say both. Okay. Um, when it comes to fabric donations, it's a donation. We don't expect any sort of monetary compensation in return because we have so much material. We want to make it as accessible and as affordable as possible. So on that level, we're not expecting there any for there to be any really funds in return. However, we do want to build, you know, loyalty. We want to build trust with people. We want them to know that if they needed fabric and materials for their small brand or for their, um, you know, family who's learning how to sew, they can look to us as an ethical resource for those materials instead of shopping with a bigger uh, fa or fabric retailer like Joann's or Mood. We're a more ethical option. Mm -hmm. So it it it's interesting that you that you talk about like education with with fabric as well, right? Um, as as an educator working in the ed tech space. I've been really interested in, in what happens with uh, makerspaces in schools. And I remember a friend, you know, showing me around a makerspace in an elementary school and she's showing me all, you know, robotics, all these things. And she said, do you know what they use most? And I said, I, no, she said, that'd be the sewing machines. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the kids really enjoy making their own clothes and things like that. So, you know, it seems exciting that, that you're making an option available to get fabrics out to places where, where kids or students in professional settings are, are learning to use this. Yeah, exactly. I think that learning, you know, those basic skills of sewing and mending and even the value of fabric and raw resources is really important overall in the mission of sustainability. You know, if we don't know the value of our clothes and the value of the people who made them or even the resources that were extracted from our earth in order to make this, then we're not really going to be able to understand why sustainability is important in the long run. So I love getting questions and inquiries about students learning how to sew with a more ethical option like Fab Scrap, because that means that we're at least thinking about, you know, the values of our clothes and keeping things around for longer at a younger age. So I think it's a really great thing that we really focus on. Now, it's nice to see that that there's both the immediate value of the fabric and and the the philosophical possibilities of just getting people to think about you know what they use and why and and where it goes. Um, yeah. Could you speak a little more about the giveaway programs that that are part of you know your operations in in New York and in Philadelphia? So, um, you know, I, I you, you started to touch on that, but I'd love I'd love us to, to get a little more detail on that front. Uh, the giveaway programs like the fabric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I can go a little bit backwards to our 50-50 goal. So like I said, we want to be 50-50. So we want to give away as much fabric as we sell. So this is done through our volunteer program. So anyone who comes and volunteers with us, they get five pounds of free fabric just from helping us sort through textile waste. Hmm. So through that initiative, we might receive 7,000 pounds of fabric every week from brands but we're sorting through upwards of seven to 8,000 pounds a week just through our volunteer program. So we're, we've really been evening it out. So our the way that we're operating really is dependent on people coming in and helping us 
-hmm. So we want to make sure that that is appreciated. So our volunteers mm -hmm. are always going to get free fabric. Mm -hmm. We also do a lot of the educational outreach. So like I said, working with K through 12 groups who are maybe doing after school programs around textile waste or learning how to sew, we'll donate up to 30 pounds of fabric per group, which is a lot of fabric if you think about 30 pounds. Um, we also do pay what you wish options. So online through our online store and in our in-person fabric thrift stores, we have pay what you wish options where folks can take certain amounts of fabric, a whole roll if they like, and they can tell us how much they want to pay for that. So it can be a dollar for a whole roll or they can take it for free. So that is for the raw, the raw materials that we get. But with the sample garments, sometimes they're not mutilated. They're perfectly fine pieces of clothing that a brand was going to throw away, but they ended up sending to us instead. Those were able to work with local nonprofits and mutual aid groups to redistribute. So we will receive professional development clothing that has nothing wrong with it. We can work with a mutual aid group that will then redistribute that to folks who are maybe in need of professional development clothes to go to an interview or to work at their new job. So when I'm saying we're trying to make this as, as accessible as possible, this is how we're doing it. Nice. And and so in terms of an online store, um, fabscrap.org would be where they'd go, correct? I believe it's the, the URL. I don't know off the top of my head, but if you go to fabscrap.org, Mm -hmm. and you click on the shop tab at the very yeah. top, that'll bring you to three different options. You can shop in person in Brooklyn or in Philadelphia. And the third option is to go to our online store, which is where you can find a ton of fabric as well if you're not located in Brooklyn or in Philadelphia. And it looks like there's a link there for volunteers to to make, make their way to free fabric. Uh, that, that's nice that you get people involved in that way. Exactly, yes. Okay, excellent. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background so so you know here you are part of this this organization that you know these two you know kind of visionaries found right um you know what what is it that that brought you to this organization and 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 the role that you play in it yeah um i guess when i when i look back and how i found fab scrap i really wasn't going in the direction of textile waste when i first went to college or when i was first going into studies i was really focused on communications and pr and I wanted to go into marketing, but when I was going into it, I actually really didn't enjoy it. And I ended up stumbling upon this documentary called True Cost, which dives into the injustices and the horrors of the fashion industry. It changed my whole perspective on fashion. I grew up being someone who loved clothing, who loved shopping. So it really rocked my world. That was about when I was the beginning of college. After that, I just made it a mission to work in as many thrift stores as possible. So through working at thrift stores, I found the value of used clothing, but I also saw how much there was. And it really drove my interest in textile waste management on the post-consumer side. When I started learning how to sew and wanting to make my own garments, I found Fab Scrap as a resource to get fabric. After I saw that, I just kind of knew in my head that I wanted to work at Fab Scrap some way, somehow. And it actually ended up working out because they're hiring someone to manage their fabric thrift store. So I'd already had all this experience in managing and working with clothes and working at thrift stores. So it was a natural pro progressive move for me to actually get involved more with textile waste. And ever since then, I've been with Fab Scrap for about two years and I've been able to manage the fabric thrift store. I was education lead for a while. So presentations and working with groups and teaching people about textile waste. And now I'm the community lead where I actually am managing more of the front of house operations as well as our education initiatives. So really just the, 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 just stumbling upon this documentary and working in these thrift stores really changed the trajectory of what I was going to do. Always cool to see uh, professional possibilities arise out of uh, out of volunteering one's time. I think that's 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 great. We'll yeah. wind things down for the recording, and then I'll hand it back to you for the uh, the final word. But to everyone who has watched this, uh, either on our YouTube page or on our SiliconValleyRotary.com page, thank you for taking your time to to find ways to be inspired by the stories that we get to share with you. Uh, we believe that uh, that regular 
contact with the the innovation that is occurring out there, but maybe under the radar of, of the normal, normal media, uh, is is the kind of thing that can make us focus on our own possibilities for serving our communities. Uh, if you are a Rotarian and you would like a, a way to pass along to your club evidence of, of attending our meeting, then by all means, uh, scroll a little bit farther down the SiliconValleyRotary.com page. You'll see an attendance form and fill that out by properly putting in your email address and you'll get something you can pass along to your club secretary. At the bottom of the page is our discuss forum, D-I-S-Q-U-S. And by, by logging in as a part of that, you can leave a message. We would love for you to share your thoughts on this program and on other elements of the meeting as well. The, the learn something new, the inspiring uh, video, the, the message from our president, the things that we've got going on in our club, or maybe you just want to learn more about Rotary. Feel free to reach out to us. We would, we would love to connect with you. As we always like to do, we hand it back to our speaker for the final word. So Aaron, I hand it back to you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with your group. If there's anything anyone takes away from this presentation, I hope it's to, one, rethink what waste is. It's not just an inevitable outcome. It is actually a very valuable resource. And two, if you're feeling climate anxiety and you're wondering how you can help with this overall problem of textile waste, please consider donating to Fab Scrap as we are a nonprofit, and it really helps with our mission in diverting textiles from landfill. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Everyone, we will see you next week.